Hi and welcome back to <clears throat> Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and Plastic Models for Beginners. Back to basics. To me, a two and a half ton six by six cargo truck. <clears throat> All right, we left off on step 16. Got the sides, headache board, <clears throat> and tailgate in place. Now it's time to do the lower um, cargo bed details so let's start with <coughs> C9 and C8 since those look to be the easiest parts to install first so that's nine so that one goes on that side this one's eight goes on this side <coughs> Okay, and it goes just like that. Look at it, make sure it's vertical and lined up. And then C9. And this one is kind of nice. It's got this other weird little tab going on right here. So it would be really hard to. Uh, accidentally install it in backwards which I seem to have done a few parts this this kit so same thing make sure it's pressed into place and that it is perpendicular to the lower surfaces there all right so we've got those in place so now we need two A4s need an A4 and an A14 For the mud flaps and the mounts for the mud flaps. And those look pretty good, except for I'm going to knock the edge off like I've done on the other parts. Make sure that's trimmed off. Okay, now let's see. Let's take a look at something here. This one fits there. Okay, so it's got um, an ejector pin mark. And since that's in the back, it's kind of going to be concealed, but I'm going to go ahead and scrape that smooth using my... Uh, curved blade here it's gonna have dust and dirt and mud if I decide to use mud on it so it's gonna be disguised anyway but just in case 
I want to make sure it's not there. <clears throat> so we got that. Then we have this brace like thing. So it looks like this goes there, and then this goes there like that. So I'm going to put some cement in there and then push it up to where it's perpendicular to the bed. Okay, so we got that. Pfft, whoops. Oh, that's just real dandy. Let's try that again. for a second. And put a little dab of cement there and there. And that looks pretty good. <clears throat> okay so that is that all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these other ones off and uh, clean them up and put them in place because it will be exactly the same steps as what I did here so there's no need to you know take the time on the on the video to do that so I'll come back once I get those in place okay so I've got all these bottom parts um, glued in place and they're pretty cured up and they're ready to go so the next part on this step 17 calls for the fuel cans and the tools so what I'm going to do is um, the tools I will actually glue into place with the exception of the shovel that way it'll make it easier to paint these parts underneath I'll paint that separately, then glue it in place. Um, but as, as for the fuel cans, um, I just happen to have some that were already assembled from a previous project that I ended up not using, and I'm going to use these instead. And here's the reason why. As you can see, on these here, the uh, filler cap <clears throat> looks more true life whereas the ones on the kit the, the filler cap itself you know the fill spout is just it's just a flat disc so you know I'm not going to use those because I want to use something that looks a little bit better and this actually comes from the other accessory kit that Tina makes uh, Allied Vehicles accessory set that I mentioned early on that I use for something else. So I have those, so I need one for each side. So what I need to do, since I'm not using those, and I'm getting near the end here, I need to do these parts here so I need to do the jerry can holders from the accessory set and they are two pieces you have the back piece and then the front so I'm going to cut these off
cut the extra bit of sprue off right there. And the part off the bottom, which is kind of nice because that means I'm not going to have a bunch of cleanup to mess with. No cleanup on these, as a matter of fact. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this with that. Now there's a thin edge and a thick edge. In order to um, simulate scale, you'll want to put the thin edge facing up. Get over here where you can see what I'm doing. Whoops, man, I keep dropping it. Make sure it's lined up. A little touch of cement there. And there. And just make sure it's lined up. Once you get the cement on there, it'll make it a lot easier to it'll stay in place while you get it lined up. Okay, and then let that cure up really, really good. Then I can sand those joints. <clears throat> there and there okay so there's that one and I'll do the other one off camera come back okay so the next thing I want to do now I was looking at the uh, the cab here I'm doing some final lining up of parts now I don't know let's see if you can see here the gap between the bottom of the door of the cab here and this lip on the back of the running board it's larger in the front compared to the back and there's gaps here on both sides see some see some daylight through there so that's not lined up right so here's where I'm going to use these handy dandy clamps here and here's where this, these rubber pads come in handy so I'm going to put it right here I'm going to squeeze it until the lip of this is parallel with the underneath of the door here. Okay, so that takes care of that one. Then I'm going to do the same thing on this one here. So that's going to do two things. It's going to align that. And so now that is contacting right underneath here, which is more like the way it should be. So that's in place. Now, there's a little bit of give in the fenders here, like they're flared out a little bit. So. I'm going to use this larger clamp across the top squeeze it together like that so now it is all nice and tight and snug all the way around Let's see if I flip this over without any clamps coming off without breaking off any small parts so then once I have that then I can take my cement 
put a little dab on the contact point do it underneath so it doesn't mar the finish and that'll be enough to hold it all together once um, once I take the clamps off I'm also going to put some right here where the top lip of the running board meets the bottom of the cab body itself so everything will be all nice and tight okay and then carefully set it aside to cure Okay, so now we're on to step number 18, the last thing. And before I can attach all of the uh, accessory parts, I need to attach the cab and the bed. So, in putting the cab onto the, uh, the frame, the chassis, you've got a couple of pins here that fit in these holes here. Okay, that's fairly simple then the front kind of snaps down like that now whenever I was first putting it together I couldn't get this to go down flush on the framework here on the chassis so um, I just kind of eyeballed it to see what the problem was and what it was was on the front of the engine this radiator line there's a little there's a locator pin that sticks out that fits in the top of the radiator <clears throat> and I couldn't quite get it to line up right so if you're planning on having that open and you want that radiator line to fit in the top of the radiator I just cut it off because I'm not exposing it you might want to wait to actually cement this into place you could probably do everything else but then that way it'd give you you'd be able to line it up a little bit better and I probably could have done it without doing all that but you know like I said I'm not I'm not going to be displaying the engine so um, that little part being cut off doesn't really matter. And then once you know, once you've got it into place, um, it all fits together nicely, and it fits on the sides like it should because this this needs to sit down inside of that right there. So it is all good with the world. So. I'm going to glue that into place and what I'm going to do is in order to help it and to make sure it sticks good I'm going to use my thicker testers liquid cement on this part here put some there, some there, and some there and then I'll use liquid cement in the front part to get it all to stick together properly. And there's like some notches right here, so that'll help you line it up. But kind of stick the engine in first and then locate the bottom of the cab in place so you can make sure this is all lined up in front. So with that in place, be careful you don't break any little parts off. I'm going to hold it and then I'm going to take my good old extra thin and where it fits in the back right here I'm going to wick some cement down in there okay kind of hold that for a second or two and then hold the front and wick some cement into there and there and whoops sorry guys getting kind of close to the camera there that should do it all right so i'm going to let that cure up for a minute so 
while that's drying, I can cut out these um, bows for the uh, um, for the canvas top. So we've got a total of a thirty. We have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six of those. One, two, three, five of those. Sorry. So. Now, if you were wanting to put these in position, but without a canvas top, you would remove this lower portion here, and then they would just glue onto the top right here. But I'm just going to stack mine because mine's going to be totally open top. Leastwise, that's what I'm thinking right now. I may consider doing something totally different but we shall see so I'm going to cut these off all five of them and uh, start cleaning them up in the usual method make sure there's no parting lines make sure that uh, extra sprue business is cut off of there and uh, then I can move on to the assembly part of it okay so I thought the video was running but it wasn't so I went ahead and glued the tools on here. Normally I, I glue tools separately, but in my research I've discovered that uh, the US tools were painted along with the vehicle. So um, I'll be painting all that and then I'll add some uh, bare metal finish to the, uh, to like the shovel and the edges of the handles and stuff, just to simulate um, use. And then the bed, which I meant to show you I was gluing on, it's not really that big a deal. There's there's some tabs here. You can probably see them inside of there, hopefully. There and there, front and back. And they just slot right into place. Very, very simple. And then I applied my cement from the inside so it wouldn't mar up the outside of the finish. So that's glued into place. Now the spare spare wheel fits on this right here and it fits no problem without um, having to glue it in place beforehand because I like to I want to be able to paint this before I put it in place so it can all be weathered together. Alright, so that is done. Now the canvas supports, canvas uh, top supports, I got all those cleaned up, I glued them all together and as you can see I wasn't real careful to make sure they were all lined up because as you can see on the photo or on the artwork here, they're not stacked real super neat and I wouldn't think they'd take a whole lot of time to make sure that you know everything was just you know so 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 um, and they fit right here okay but I also need to make sure it doesn't interfere with this which goes here so right about there should be good so I'll glue those in place there. Then once I do that, then I can move on to that. That will finish up um, the parts on the main instructions. And then it will be on to finishing all of the accessory parts that came in the accessory kit that I got. So I'm going to let that dry up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and glue these in place here and then uh, I'll start working on the accessory stuff like the machine gun ring and all the associated parts from that kit. Alright so I'm going to glue this in place. Actually before I do that what I need to do is for whenever I paint this I need to mask the inside of this cab so I'm going to go ahead and get some tape cut up and get that masked off whenever I do the primer and the paint for the outside parts. 
All right, the cab has been um, masked off, so no paint will get in there where I did all that paint work earlier. So now that's done, I'm going to start assembling all these little um, extra pieces like the ammo can, which is A12, 13, and A3 from the accessory kit. <clears throat> Cut those parts off. Get those cleaned up. Now this ammo can must be like a spare or something because it goes on the front of the uh, M36 um, ring tr truck mount, is what it's called, I guess. So. I'll show you when I flip the instructions over, but I need to get this together first. Do a little sanding here. Make sure it's all smooth. And these cans, these ammo cans, boxes, whatever you want to call them, are quite simple, but they are detailed pretty nicely. Um, there's a seam on the side, so we need to get rid of that. Looks like the uh, bracket part that holds the can in place. So we'll get that off of there, like that. Whoops, like that. And then make sure you put that thing right side up. Glue that part. Like that. that and I'm gonna let that dry up a little bit and then I'm gonna have to uh, there's a seam here and here that I'm gonna need to fill in because that um, is supposed to be part of the bracket and that wouldn't be I wouldn't have that seam in there like that so I'm gonna let that dry for a second uh, let's see the, the the machine gun, the M2 machine gun. I'm going to do completely separately, so I'm going to leave that probably for last. Um, then we've got these two A16. Those are a couple of uh, um, brackets. hold down hooks that's what they are and they mount right there on the sides you see right there right there <clears throat> all right so you have a 16 on both side and then the jerry can holder on both side <clears throat> on this side I've already installed them here and here it's pretty pretty easy and straightforward it's a very small part so be careful that you don't break it and you don't launch it into oblivion because it is tiny and when cleaning it up make sure you cut as close as you can so you can uh, so you can do as little sanding as possible And then you'll also want to watch very gently sand that thing because boy it'll snap. 
and you'll want to this the mounting point right here it's just it's supposed to be flat it has a little bit of a mold parting line there that you'll want to carefully cut off so make sure your blade's really sharp I wouldn't try and sand it like that and then the way I did this and I just for positioning there's no solid points for positioning I just looked at the uh, front of the box uh, the main box front of this box and then also the side right there so it kind of lines up with the front of the headlight and then just take a little bit of cement touch it on the point where it connects and just carefully put it into place And position it thusly now this one it's weird this one's kind of angled compared to the other one so I don't know if something got twisted or what but uh, once it cures up good I'll just uh, carefully twist that thing more into place to match the other one so I'll let that cure up good and then I'll twist it around and then this one here uh, because there's all these texture detail on that running board what I did is I used this cement here the thicker stuff and um, put, <clears throat> put it on there if you want something a little bit thicker so it'll stick well and then just drop it in place and then position it and just make sure that it's lined up with the running board all right so there's that then the next part are these uh, holders on the that go on the bumper and in the uh, illustration it shows jerry cans which I'll uh, I'll make some more of those up from my uh, accessory set and glue those into place you know once everything's done I'll I'll put them together I'll assemble them and um, paint them like this and then put them into position but what I did is I already cut a7 and a21 to show you on this side there are um, this one is a20 on the other side and as you can see there are little locators here and those all fit on the inside like that and that was kind of tricky but I got them together and then the way it fits together is this notch here fits on top of this extended frame here this little section right there fits right underneath the um, the fender oh man yeah, it just kind of fits together like that okay looks like this here Okay, so I'm going to glue that into position. It's kind of tricky holding this in place. Uh, 
lay it on its side like this. See if that makes it any easier. How's that? Yeah, there, well, let's see. Yep, yeah, that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I will glue this part first. And that'll that's the biggest contact point, so that'll help hold it in place. Let it set up for a second there. And not monkey around with it. Push it down to where this is making contact there. cement here so it's contacting the chassis right there behind the bumper and then put a little bit here and a little dab there and that should hold it all into place and just double check and make sure it's all lined up which it is and then set it down and let that cure up and while that's curing up then I can submit this into place here whoops make sure it's flush there use this to hold it while it's drying okay then cut off this A2 here which is the uh, it's like a clip or bracket to hold the barrel and it's very tiny so it's essential that uh, be real careful with it and yeah, sorry and then carefully scrape the parting line off. That's where a nice sharp blade comes in handy. Now on one side there's like a looks like a little piece of bolt detail. You won't want to cut that off. Okay, and that fits right in here. So I'm going to take these here tweezers. It's got a little notch there that fits on top
of that little bit right there so it's gonna look like that so pull cement in that slot and then put it right there make sure it's lined up properly Like that. <clears throat> okay, I'll let that cure up. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble this uh, storage bracket for this side and install that just like I did that. And then when I come back, we'll be able to install the ring on top of these three mounting points here. <clears throat> Alright, one more part, well not one more, but one of the other parts I need to install on this gun ring is uh, an additional piece right here. It has some little teeny tiny locator holes and little teeny tiny pins. So you gotta make sure you get those lined up like that. Hope your fingers don't stick to them. Those are like really small. Okay, there we go. Got that one. So I'm going to hold it on that side. Now, let's see. I'm going to hold it like that. And then do a little bit of cement just in one spot. Just so I can get it in place. Because it's kind of bowed up a little bit. It's not really laying flat. So I'm going to hold that part. Put a little right there. And then a little bit. Right there, I'm just trying to do it away from where my fingers are because I sure don't want to leave any fingerprints because that'd look horrible. Okay, so that finishes up that. It's kind of a lip, it adds a lip all the way around. It's a very delicate piece, so be careful when you're cleaning it up. And then you have the uh, Oh, let's see, where's the illustration here? Right here. So like that. So this part here goes there. And then this part, there's a locating pin and a little hole there. So just put that together and just kind of hold it in place. Now I guess theoretically this is supposed to slide. So I'm going to put it where I want it. That way if it does stick on the ring, <clears throat> no big deal. But I'm going to try and just glue it in the back here. That way I can possibly reposition the machine gun if I wanted to. Sure, it's lined up. Yeah, it seems to be. Yeah, it slides. So that's kind of cool. All right, so that completes the ring. <clears throat> so now I can actually install it on here. And this goes forward. So this locating pin goes there, that one there, that one there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of line them all up. that hold it in place 
and glue them one at a time. Make sure they're on there really tight. And there. And then last. Oops, that one popped up. And that one right there. All right, so I'm gonna hold that in place for a second. Let it cure up, because so I don't want them to pop loose. Because it is a little bit heavier on that side right there. So I'm gonna hold on to that and let it dry. <clears throat> All right, so I got the uh, machine gun ring glued in place. <clears throat> And this part still does slide and that could come in handy when it comes time for painting and weathering it might make it a little easier to get in there I don't know once I have the the machine gun in place but with that um, we got that in place got the uh, the racks on the side they got this um, straightened up that little part there um, so basically looks like construction is complete on this kit uh, there's some extra parts left over that I will uh, save and um, you know if anybody needs them or if I come across another kit I need I'll have them got the little doggy there so I'm decide if I'm gonna paint him up and put him on here or not I may just do it but we'll see so that concludes construction for the Tamiya two and a half ton six by six cargo truck. And I have to say, um, just, you know, in typical Tamiya fashion, everything worked just fine. No surprises, no problems. And uh, is now ready for primer and then paint. So this is the end of this video and construction. So thanks for joining me here on Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. And in the next episode, I will come back and I will start the painting process with some primer. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, etc., put them in the comments section down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So as always, thanks for watching and I will see you all later.